Hi friends, it's Tuesdays with Chanya. I'm Chanya here with my county link and today I'm at St. Paul's Episcopal Church right here on Broadway and Water Street and we are going to take a look at it. We're also going to check out their amazing pipe organ that we're going to get to hear the music played. We're going to learn some history about the church. So I'm going to turn it around and show it to you. As we turn around, you have these beautiful stained glass windows and I'm going to come over here because these two windows specifically are different than the other stained glasses in the church. While all very beautiful, these particular ones, let me walk down through here, are, has, has a different texture to it. So when you touch it, it's almost like it was done and like they thought maybe baked on, that type of thing. So they're gonna find more information about that. And when they do, we will come back and share more about that. We're gonna walk up and we're gonna meet Miss Mara and Mr. Gary, and we're gonna learn more about the church's history, the organ, and so forth. Around. Good morning, Miss Mara. How are you today? Just fine. We are curious. Tell us about the years that the St. Paul's Episcopal Church started and where it began at first. So we started in 1837. 1837, we were on uh, Walnut and Third Street. And uh, then the way it got started, there was Eliza Briggs. She's got a plaque there. Eliza Briggs wanted to be confirmed, and she went by horseback to Piqua to get, get confirmed. The minister from St. James in Piqua used to come to Greenville once in a while for the whole community hold Sunday school because he thought uh, church and libraries on, on the Bible were important. Great. And so she wanted to ask how to make the Episcopal Church here in Greenville. And the Reverend Gullion told her, you have to get so many people to subscribe to it and they got 23 people, and so they became a church. Okay. Third and Walnut was the first church, and then uh, in 1902, Cornerstone was laid for this church. Okay. And uh, was consecrated in 1906. Okay, and you had some pictures of kind of like the blueprints that they would give you that yes. would show how the church is. Okay, you do that. She's gonna show you the blueprints of that, and I'm gonna, while she's pulling that, Gary was explaining to me how the top of the church, if you were to turn it upside down, would be like the base of a ship. So it's almost sort of replicates um, the ark, right? So it's like Noah's ark, how that replicates that. So there are some blueprints for the Episcopal churches that they have here, but how cool is that? So if you turn it upside down, it would be like the bottom of a ship. So that's part of um, some of the blueprints that they have. And then Miss Mara has a picture here that we're going to look at. And this is another Episcopal church that's sort of like this one, but it goes in the tower, right? This was the National Church's plans, and anyone can adapt it to their landscaping. Mm -hmm. This is our church, and okay. that's the one in uh, Montana. Okay. Very similar, Very just similar. a little bit different on the, and you said they enter up through the tower at the one yeah, looks in like Montana. It. Okay. Looks like it. Okay. Very and good. there's St. James and Piqua, which is also a stone church. Okay. Very good. All right. So we're going to turn over here to Mr. Gary. How are you today? And you're going to tell us a little bit about the organ and how that, that we can still get that music today, even without necessarily an organist, because they are few and far defined, aren't they? Yes. Hi. Thanks. Uh, yes. Uh, if I may begin, this organ is one of very few organs, pipe organs, left in Dark County. Um, what's very interesting about it is that it has been adapted to include a MIDI, which is a way of recording the songs, but preserving the sound. Okay. So what we did a couple of years ago when COVID hit, when you found it very difficult to get someone to play and be the priest. So we found a priest who could do both. Awesome. And it was Wayne Rollins. And Wayne did an excellent job for us and had left and moved on fairly recently. So we redid the organ in probably the mid-90s. We uh, fixed things that were not quite right, and uh, it's beautiful right now. Okay. And uh, with the MIDI, it allows us to record a song, play it through a service, and end it. And we don't need a person to do that. 
only that we do need someone that can play the organ to actually make the recordings for us. Okay, so if someone can play the organ, they can do some of the songs you don't have, and then you'll have those in your archive Absolutely. to play. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. Are we able to hear it? Yes, if you don't mind, I okay. will attempt to play the Okay, song for you. okay. We'll see what happens. Okay. So stay tuned. We're going to listen. to hear that pipe organ. They will also be having their Christmas Eve services. We are going to be publishing a list this next coming week here um, to show, well, this coming week because it's Christmas this week. So we're going to be publishing the list. I believe it's coming out tomorrow of all the Christmas Eve services that are local here. So make sure you check out one of those and come out and check out this great church. So stay with me and we'll see you next week. <laughs> 